take me back to the time when you knew inherently, <laughs> right, that I meant to be something special. When did you know that? I don't know if I ever knew it. I just knew that my life was different. I felt like my life that I was living was different from a lot of other kids around me. Um, and I, I, I felt like the, all of the adversity that came my way dealing with my mom, who could have easily destroyed me, like literally she told me she would destroy me to my face. Your she, mother said that to you? My mother said that to me. She said, I will dog you for the rest of your life to my face. How old were you? I was about, um, I had to be, that was when I was hiding in my, my mother's closet. I had pre-recorded something because she wouldn't talk to me and I was trying to get her to speak to me. And um, my cousin and I re -re pre-recorded on the little tape cassettes mm -hmm. <coughs> and I hid in her closet um, of my grandmother's home, her mom, hoping that when she came home, I could just press play, she would listen. And I poured my heart out, like just saying, you don't have to speak to me. You don't have to, um, you know, we don't have to be friends. You don't, you don't have to call me your daughter, but can, can you at least speak to me, acknowledge me, you know, um, let's try to have a friendship. And when she came home, my, I remember my heart was just beating out of my chest. And I think it was around 12, 11, 12, I think. And um, she came in, she was, she figured out what was going on. She, you know, she was like, who is there? You know, she opened the closet door. She pulled all the clothes and things off of me, grabbed me out of there, took the recording, um, and she was livid. She was livid. My grandmother was home. It was her mom. And they, she told me, you know, I don't have a daughter. Um, she pretended like, you know, I didn't exist, but she was livid. She had a conversation with my grandmother, her mom, and she told her mother to her face, I've never had a child. She was like, I've never had a child. And my grandmother, for the first time ever in my life, I saw her take up for me. Like, why can't you just speak to her? Why do you have to treat her that way? And my mother was like, I've never had a child. I don't know what you're talking about. They were arguing, and I just remember crying. My cousin was crying. And after she was done speaking to my mom, um, her mother, she came to me and she said, I will dog you for the rest of your life. She was like, I will never be your friend. I will dog you for the, I will never forget those words. And that was, you know, after that, um, I think just, it just left me feeling like that's the end of it. You know, that was the end of it. And I don't know what happened to me, but over time, I think I just developed like this thick skin that said, I'm gonna show her wrong. Like, you're not gonna destroy me. And she tried everything that she could try. It was so crazy because I remember I won my second pageant, so I was, a, I was 16. And that pageant, you didn't have to reveal your age. So the first one you did, I was 14, 13 or 14. 13. So the second one I entered, I won. Anyway, my mother was calling the pageant director and was telling her I was an alcoholic, um, I was dating this older man, I was all of these horrible things and that I should not be a, her beauty queen. I, I was a horrible representation. And she tried to get my crown taken away. And I remember having this meeting with both of my grandmothers being there with, her name was Rosa Robinson. And my grandmother, both of my grandmothers had to come and it was like a trial. And I was on trial to fighting to keep my first crown that I ever, ever won. And it was all because of my grandmother. I have all the proof, the letters, I have everything in my, in my safety deposit box. Do you think it's a form of, do you think she's suffering through some form of mental illness? Absolutely. That's why I studied psychology, because I wanted to find out what was wrong with my mother. It was my only passion in life at the time. I wanted to know what would make a person look their own child in the face and say, you are not mine. I never had you. And was confident. Like, in her eyes, yeah. she, she meant that. And... Um, 
I've always felt that nobody was ever on my side. No, no one ever fought for me to try 